it's like I'm young again and everything is bright and the future is like for us to take and to do good with. We come here just to ride the donkey and to plant, not to talk about the plants. Is that right? No, because I need to talk about the plants. You always talk about the plants every day. You are sick. Everybody seems to be criticizing Osama, but they fail to understand that this man is a poet and an artist. And at this point, he has basically admitted that he just used Debbie to further his poetry career. But you know what? It's for the greater good. Do people not care enough about art and poetry these days to understand sometimes you just need to use an old lady for a green card and then abandon her afterwards? Osama seems to be under the impression that being an artist is just a really easy thing to do in America. Like, oh, it's difficult in my country, but if I go to America, I could just be an artist. He says he wants to sell his paintings and his art, but only to people people who will appreciate it. He doesn't want somebody to just hang it up on the wall and not pay attention to it. So he's beginning his art career by telling certain people not to buy his art. Oh, you want to buy that there? Well, first you need to prove that you can appreciate it. Oh, you're interested in this art? First, you're going to have to fill out this very extensive survey. So when we last left off with these two, Debbie had just moved to Morocco to permanently live there. And Osama is like, wait, what? Whoops, I thought we were moving to America to live there permanently. Oh, silly. Anyway, we don't talk about plans here, okay? The plans just happen on their own. Osama and I plan to stay a couple of days in the capital city of Rabat, and then we're gonna go meet mom and dad in Kemeset, which is about an hour or so away. Uh-oh, you hear that, Osama? She's planning things again. God, the nerve of some people to plan stuff, to plan for their future. What a bunch of squares. Well, it's good to finally wind down yep. this evening and Talk, discuss our plans because there's a couple of things I want to talk to you about. Yeah. Plans. You know how we're going to your mom and dad's house. Um, what did you just say? Did you say the P word again? Is that was that what I just heard? Listen, we're gonna move in with my parents. I'm gonna invest in this crypto my friend told me about, and we're gonna be fine. No, but seriously, it's very clear that Osama wants to move to America and he doesn't want to stay in his country, even though that's exactly what Debbie thinks is happening. But instead of talking about it, he just gets mad and says that she's sick in the head for bringing it up. Okay, I need kind of a time frame because okay, one. Once we go to mom and dad's and then we need to like start looking at apartments and robot too. Osama is the one with his entire life ahead of him, and he doesn't want to think about the future at all. His plan is to go on a reality TV show and take advantage of an old woman. Anytime something like this is brought up, you can see that he gets visibly annoyed. As you will stay here like uh, two months or one month, and after you will leave to the US. Because I know that you will come back for your business, for your home, you know, for something important. I like how he tried to just sneak that in there like she wouldn't notice. So you'll stay for a little bit and then you'll leave, of course, because, you know, your business and your family. Maybe you could just take me with you. I'll get a green card. I'll become a famous artist. You say I'm going to be here two months at your mom and dad's house and then you want me to go back to the States? Ah, uh, yep. You want me to go back to the States? Ah, uh, yep. Well, we can't stay here. My parents are a total drag. They're gonna cramp our style. This is a decision of life. Oh, First, you have okay. to know my family, right, how they are, how they live, the tradition. I never I mean, spent like uh, two months with you. So now he's trying to say that this is like a test run or something, like she has to see how his family is and how his traditions are, and then they'll move to America. None of it really makes a whole lot of sense, and I think he's just trying to stall and postpone this conversation for as long as possible, which is kind of familiar on this show. I think we've seen this a couple hundred times. I don't get it. I'm totally confused, but you know, I don't like what I'm hearing. It makes me feel sick. Yeah, I'm sick. Him telling me, well, we need to live two months in reality together. It's like, what the hell is that supposed to mean? Listen, Debbie, you just don't understand what it's like to be the voice of a generation, which is clearly what Osama thinks he is. So what I'm assuming happened here is that Osama just agreed to whatever she wanted to do, and now he's going back on that and acting as if it never happened. My guess is that he watched the season with Danielle and Muhammad on it, and he was like, you know what, I could do that. But he chose someone who is a lot tougher to manipulate. Because I need to live with you in reality, to see if you accept me in reality, if me accept you in reality. Why couldn't you tell me, gee, Debbie, why don't you come and I'll see if I can accept you in reality or not? Because if I say to you this, he will not come. Listen, Debbie, the only way for us to accept each other in reality is if we lie to each other. But let's just forget that for now. Look at this painting. What do you see here? I mean, what do you really see? Look at this thing. I can, I can make millions tomorrow if you just put me in America. Drop me anywhere in America. Drop me in the middle of North Dakota 
Dakota and I will make millions. Well, how do you think I feel now? How, what, what do you think it's like to be sitting over here looking like a fool? Sick. Why didn't you say, Debbie, don't pack all your stuff? I am very sorry. I wanted to tell you the truth, but I just, I couldn't bring myself to do it. But look at this painting. What are, you didn't really give me your thoughts on this. So yeah, clearly this is the beginning of the end for these two, but it's also actually the beginning. So it's the beginning and the end. <sighs> You really screwed up big time, Osama. Why? It's like shame on you. Why? Because I said the truth. I would just want to get maybe to feel, but we have to be in reality. You see, I think he's prepping her for the whole conversation about moving to America, but then his family kind of went and spilled the beans. Their visit with his family actually went surprisingly well. They were completely accepting of the relationship and it seemed like they all got along pretty well. I don't remember exactly how it was revealed, but you could tell they were under the impression that he was going to be moving to America. So basically, anytime the conversation is brought up, he just gets really mad and tries to change the subject. They go out for a nice night of painting and donkey riding, and then Debbie dares to bring up the subject of their plans for the future. Come see my Mama, mama love you. Pretty, pretty. Donkey. My pretty. Okay, now I still haven't figured out if the donkey was actually part of the plan. Oh, I shouldn't say that word. Did Osama know the donkey was going to be here? Or was the donkey just kind of hanging out, chilling? And then he saw the camera crew roll up and he was like, ah, again with this? Two. Why does this donkey look so self-aware? This donkey looks like it knows it's on a reality TV show and is not happy about it. He's like, this is what my life is now. I'm just a prop for Debbie and Osama. What, what an existence. All right, come on, Debbie. We're here to ride the donkey and paint. We're not here to sing to the donkey. That's not part of the plan. And my plan was to not talk about the plans. Let me try. We have to paint because the sun wave goes on. But I want to ride the donkey. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, her falling off that donkey was probably the happiest point of their relationship. We need to have plans for our future. Yep. Debbie? Please, we are here to paint. You can't talk paint and plans. You can't, it doesn't even make any sense, okay? We don't need to worry about plans. We're on a show now. We're big time. We can do whatever we want. You know how much that donkey is worth now? We come here just to divide the donkey and to paint, not to talk about the plans. Is that right? No, because I need to talk about the You plans. always talk about the plans every day. This is the day because I will paint, I talk about the plan. I will write, talk about the plan. I love how the reason she has to keep bringing up the plans is because he's never given a clear answer. He's just super vague every time. So whenever it comes up, he's like, oh, here we go again with the plans. She's obsessed with these plans. And she's like, you know what? If we just talked about the plans just once, one time, that's all I'm asking for. Then we wouldn't need to talk about it again for a while. I will go out and talk about the plan. And I time we can talk about the plan. Let's sign up for today. We talk every day about the plans and we talk about everything today. Well, okay. But when I talk about the future and needing security. Security? Do you have any idea who you're about to marry? You think I just wake up every day and put this hat on for no reason? Oh, let me put this hat on. No, when you're big time, you got to keep up the image. Oh man, this guy's probably going to be writing poems on Cameo. You always kind of say, well, we'll talk about it later. I don't want to push you at all, no. but I feel I need to I make know. plans. Okay. I just want Go a little yes, bit. Yeah. Okay, let's go. That's okay. A little bit like. Can we look at apartments online tonight? Yep, just keep talking about the plans. I swear, I'll go get that donkey. He is he is not happy about that. He is not happy about what you did. And he, like myself, is not a fan of discussions about financial security. Maybe we can. The odd thing is, me and Osama have these wonderful, deep conversations via texting. Oh wow, he learned how to use chat GPT and now he doesn't know what the hell to do now that she's here in person. Do you remember that poem he read for Debbie? It sounded like it was written by the worst AI possible. Let's do a quick flashback, shall we? The name of poems is I Think of You. As the sun sailing in the sea, we sail to my dark world. You make all the poems dancing. You sail into my dark world. Why is this world dark? Isn't that isn't that not a good sign right there? Oh, you the messenger of the words. Your words are deeply like the Bible. Touch me, hold my bones, my heart, and everything breath inside me. Wait a minute. Is he saying that Debbie is the Messiah of the world? Isn't that a little bit alarming that he's comparing your words to the Bible? Why does he want you to hold his bones? I'm assuming that the way it translates is just strange, you know, like the words that they use mean slightly different things in his language. You, the beautiful poem, your child has come to be alive, to dance and to sing. Thank you. 
All right, now let's go get that green card, yeah. You said that I would come here and you would love me and take care of me and you would prove it. Take care of you? I was in my parents' garage an hour ago listening to Limp Bizkit. You think, you think that kind of person is gonna be able to take care of you? And now it's like you just kind of like, oh, shut up, Debbie, I don't want to talk to the hand. Why right? you don't take that patient with me? You think I'm not patient? Yep. Because you I'm, want to do everything right here, right now. I yeah. didn't want you to do it right now. I just wanted you to sketch an outline of our future. Oh, sketch an outline. I, I understand. So this is an art thing. This is all just metaphorical. It's symbolic. We don't need to plan for the future. We need to envision the future on this painting. That's me on the right in my dark world. And I will paint you on the left coming into my dark world and holding my bones. And we're just starting. I mean, I will not do everything in one day. Are you crazy? What is wrong with this guy? She's not even suggesting that. She's like, can we just talk about this for maybe five minutes? And he's like, oh, so you want to do it all in one day, huh? You want to talk about it for five minutes in one day? What are you, nuts? We're going to have to space that out a little bit. 30 seconds a day. We'll chip away at it slowly, okay? We'll not do everything in one day. You are sick. You have the mental sickness or something. He's 100% correct. There is something up with you if you like to plan stuff. Planning is bad. Just think of all the horrible people who have ever lived that have planned things. Pretty much all of them. Every evil person I could think of planned something. Is that a coincidence? I don't think so. No, but seriously, I think this guy is completely out of line saying something like that. I don't even know where that came from. Who who says something like that just because somebody wants to talk about future plans? Trying to convince someone that they are sick just for bringing up something completely normal and necessary is an interesting move. I don't know if it's the best route if you want to be a respected artist, but if you just want to look like an asshole on reality TV, that's this is a good uh, method. What? Safe times. What's yeah. going on with this lady? I don't get it, man. So you think I'm mentally ill? Hold my bones. You're acting real cold-blooded right now. And just like that, Osama became one of the worst people to appear on this show. Let's face it, there's been a lot of people on this show who have taken advantage of older women and men just to get a green card. But Osama's lack of subtlety combined with the horrible things he says and the fact that Debbie is likable just makes this a perfect storm. You see, with these two, Muhammad was 100% using Danielle just to come to America and then leave her afterward. And everybody still ended up feeling bad for him. I felt bad for him. But Osama has not had to go through all of the pain and suffering that Muhammad did. I want to talk about serious things, and you act like a, oh, you're crazy, you're mentally ill. So we talk about the plans. Our plan is you will come here and bring me to the USA, and I will go to work there, and we start our life there. All right, so she's crazy for asking if they can talk about the plans, but he's not crazy for already deciding the plans ahead of time in his own mind and then lying about it. Boy, would I love to understand what it's like to have the mind of an artist, but I don't, so I, I don't understand this kind of decision-making. I know it seems like I'm making fun of the whole art thing a lot, but trust me, it's going to be a lot more justified when you see the tell-all in the next video. We can guarantee the future here. This is our plan, and I will, from this day, never change it. If you don't accept this, we can't stop all this. Oh, Sama, that is so romantic. You want to come to America and live with me? I love how he says this is our plan, but it's not at all. She didn't have any say in this whatsoever. So it's pretty obvious he doesn't love or care about her at all. But beyond that, why does he think that this would work? Yeah, okay, after this, she's going to be like, sure, yeah, come live with me. Touch me. All my bones. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, everybody. The next few videos will probably be about the tell-all since that's happening right now. So tell me what you guys think about Osama. Is he using her? Is he actually deeply in love with her? Do you think he has a future as an artist? Also, don't forget to check out the podcast if you're interested. It's on Apple and Spotify. The links for that will be in the description. And if you'd like to see extra content, I do have a Patreon. But either way, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next one. As the sun sailing in the sea, we sail to my dark world. <laughs> You make all the poems dancing. Oh, you the messenger of the words. Your words are deeply like the Bible. Touch me, hold my bones, my heart, and everything breathe inside me. You, the beautiful poem, your child has come to be alive, to dance and to sing.